Anyways, what was the best story that you ever, like the best story to ever come out of you starting that page? Like your your favorite moment? Because you oh. talked about some things, right? Which are cool, but let's put a real story in play. Do you I gotta, hear what's I gotta, going on dude, in my career life? I gotta hear, I gotta oh, hear. All right, say probably the craziest party I've been to, or the craziest SRQ Affirmations affiliated night I've had was... What's going on, Sarasota? My name is Brad Hannon. Trey Martel. Felipe Colon. And you're not going to know this guest's name just yet. This is the man behind SRQ Affirmations. Thanks for joining us today. How you doing? How we doing, y'all? We need an alias for you for the first couple minutes, but I understand you're okay with unveiling your, uh, you know, your yeah, identity. Yeah, of course. If, if you know, you know, you okay. know. Okay. So up to this point, I've been told that maybe how many people? 10, 15, 20? Yeah, we're talking a couple of handfuls at the most. A couple of handfuls of people know, but we are going to be the ones to get to unveil him to the community. And he's doing great works to the community. Uh, Can we I just clarify, though, yes, what well, Suck Your Affirmation yes, is? Yes, that's what I was getting into. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, just for not all of our viewers are on Instagram as much as we are, or obviously our guest is. Or but, Felipe is. Well, I'm on it more than you think. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <you're, laughs> no, I know. But uh, Suck Your Affirmations is uh, what we would call a meme page, which... Um, oh, and it's so rich. It's, it's good, but it, you know what? It's it's almost amazing because it feels like Sarasota's really arrived. We have our own meme page that makes uh, inside jokes with funny pictures and sayings about There's a standard, and we've made it right. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, about what, about absolutely. What, what it's like to live here. So, yeah, Mike, get it, get it excited closer. excited to hear more about the genesis of the the page and yeah. So, we'll, we'll how about we should we just should we do it now? Are, are you are you guys ready to see who is behind? SRQ affirmation? Yeah. Let's do it. We've got, and I'll let you introduce yourself to the Sarasota community that you've enriched so much with your great memes. Hi, my name is Nick Alabasic, and I've most likely worked on your car, and you don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> and I run the best meme page in Sarasota. So I wanted to kick it off with, what, uh, what, what what's your favorite SRQ affirmations meme? I don't have one. Felipe, what's your favorite? What's your favorite? You know, these things come so fast and furious <laughs> that literally I got I got a laugh every other day when he posts something, so I don't have a favorite. All right. Well, I, I prepared for hand. this. So I was just on here a second ago, and this is one that I believe that if anybody has kids, you can relate to. The bathroom's at Payne Park, and I'm just going to try to get this in the shot here. How is it? Can you sit? All right. Well. The bathroom's at Payne Park, and it's basically a scene from... We can uh, cut it in, It looks I'm like sure. the movie Saw, and uh, there's a dead guy on the floor with blood everywhere. And this one, I remember my buddy sending me because we both were at Payne Park, and the bathroom had a syringe on the floor. It had blood spewed everywhere. I mean, it was literally like a murder scene in the, in the bathroom of the kids' park at Payne Park. Yeah, the keyword kids park. Right. You know? Kids park, dude. Like what <laughs> I, are you doing? I, it's like I can't be the only one who noticed this. So when I post, posted that one, a lot of people uproared and were like, oh yeah, like what it the was, hell? It's great. You know? So all right, so you don't have a favorite meme. You don't have a favorite meme. You've got to have one that was your favorite or absolutely oh, my took favorite off. And the one that, that did take off. Um and let me start by saying the way that SRQ affirmation started was St. Pete had started a page very similar called St. Pete Affirmations. And I took one good look at it and I was like, this sucks. We need better. So I was <laughs> like, you know what? No one else is doing it. I heard a long time ago, somebody's got to be number one. Why not you? So right. I put my foot in the water and just made a couple memes, put them out there for me and my friends to laugh about. And all of a sudden I started getting follows, right? And they were just, at the time, just affirmations. Like what an affirmation is, is like your classic workplace photo, like right. integrity, you know, things like that. And some people would make them for St. Pete, like just... I will not be upset about the traffic on my way to the beach, you know, just little reminders. And we needed one for Sarasota, but it got boring really quick. And I love making memes. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to turn this into an empire and just started throwing memes out there. And one day I had made this meme that it was a picture of a special bench at Marina Jacks. And everybody knows this meme awkwardly for the same reason. And the caption was, um, yep. dudes will make you sit here all day and then text you when I get home. I wish I kissed you. And it's so true. Like how many times have you in your <laughs> life gone to a park, sat on an awkward bench 
and you're sitting with this person for hours and you're like, do they like me? And then you, you spread apart for that day. And then at home, you're like, damn, I should text them. And it never works well. And everybody's done it. <laughs> so things like that, just people really resonate. They thought, oh my God, this is just me. No, we're all that awkward person. Yeah, you, you, know? you, you are nailing it for sure. Um, one thing that I, one, one that I think would be Trey's favorite, I'm yeah, never late for work and yeah. he's got a roundabout. Yeah, and that's, that was that's a, second, a real affirmation. That's where it started. <laughs> that was the second one he ever posted. Too. Oh. So, and you can tell too, when you look at the older memes, where I have started and where I, I so, I so you started now. with this particular kind of meme. Yeah, that called an, an affirmation, affirmation, and they're pretty like, low quality. Yeah, right. And I was like, you know what? If we're gonna have this take off, I gotta just 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 soar. You know. So what was the? We all have we we all have like a favorite. In, in cre well, in in content creation, there's always like you know the the story of one that might have taken off, right? Mm. At least relative to where you're at. So which one oh, has been the, the biggest hit? The Halloween <coughs> costumes. Uh, two years ago, Spirit. There was a a template that came out for Spear Halloween adult costume, and it was a blank, perfect template. Every single company out there was trying to yes. use it as a gag to like to boost follows, and like, it was so hard to look at because you you sit there and you look at this awesome format, like what could we do with this that isn't this crap? Right. And I said to myself, we need one for Sarasota. So I just took every stereotype of every awkward white dude or white girl that you see around here, and I just gave them, <laughs> gave them a personality really quick, came up with nine, and it spread like wildfire. I want to say it got 4,000 shares in like a day. Is it these ones, or was it the uh, actual Spirit that, Halloween that's ones? Because that's a yeah, good one, my too. my pin one. If you go to the top, oh, okay. yeah, it's the pinned. orange ones. Oh, uh, here you go. So you got Sarasota Local. You got Siesta Island Boy. You got... <laughs> Our cat elitist. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, the, the ringling school. Right, right, yeah. right. So for our guests who can't, sort of town who can't see what they're looking at That's during this right. podcast. Is there any way you guys could play? Yeah, like, no, of course. We're going yeah, 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 to throw some up there. Fall with this one. But, uh, <laughs> but still, even for our guests who aren't familiar with meme pages, I mean, these are becoming big enterprises. I mean, this isn't just somebody screwing around in a basement. I guess that's a bad analogy for Florida, but you yeah. know, this isn't someone just screwing around in their mom's second bedroom. I mean, you know, this is, these are becoming this big businesses. Well, I think he's you know. kind of a guy screwing around, but having fun with it. And it's doing great. Um, 11,200 followers. So that's well, pretty just saying, phenomenal. You, you, you know, with these kinds of things, sometimes a lot of them started screwing around. Yeah. I mean, South Park started as a couple guys screwing around and look what it's turned into this today. This podcast started out right? of three, three idiots screwing around. Yeah. Look at where we're at. So oh, you know, we've, uh, we've officially uh, made how, it. How long ago did you start the page? Oh, um, it was September 2021. So we're we're coming up on three years this year. How often do you post? Uh, at least probably about twice a week. There have been times where I've taken hiatuses. And when I take hiatuses, when I come back, people come back even harder. Like they uproar, they feel nostalgic, and it feels like a brand new season coming in every single time. Like I took a break over the summer because I went through a harsh Don't uh, forget the microphone. <laughs> and uh, when I came back, I swear I had so many love letters from people I didn't even know, and I felt the love too. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a comeback, make a couple more memes, and now we're back harder than ever. And and now I'm here just hanging out with you guys. I love it, That's man. exciting. And, yeah. and now you've officially made it yeah, yeah you're it made like it on it, the seriously you know, speaks podcast can you break down to what like <laughs> what kind of engagement are you getting i mean the letters and then the fans that's great but like what type oh. of hits what type of hits are you getting um, and like, i will have how do you to, think that compares to other types of pages uh we'll see the thing that is different about srq affirmations animations as, as opposed to other meme page every single one i make is handmade by me and a lot of the times like uh, there are people who get successful out of this town uh, they go on, and then every now and again, I'll get a DM from someone who's made it big. I check their following. They got millions of followers. They might just be like a Roblox star on YouTube or like a Fortnite person, but they're huge in their own world. Like, there's been a couple like makeup artists that have reached out to me, uh, a bunch of millionaires for no reason, just to come out and say, I love this meme. It made me feel this way. I felt special in that way. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God, I'm talking to a celebrity. Like I look up to you and you're telling me I made you laugh or feel special. Like I'm nobody, you know? That's and awesome. like, like there are people like it even boils down to the smallest things. Like because it's a small area thing, like it's 11,000 people in a small, tiny area. Like there have been people I've met throughout my life that I've always wanted to be friends with. Maybe they were just good at like sports or just cool in their friend group. And I'll just get a DM randomly 
from people I've always wanted to be friends with. And they're like, oh, you're so funny. And I'm like, get this. Like, we've met and I've been wanting Here to Here it friends. is. That's and, what I was going to ask. And we get to meet. You know? This is your story for Felipe. <laughs> that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. If you're ever, if you ever like, you know, meeting anybody that's local and you're like, yeah, yeah you definitely. know the SRQ affirmations page? I run that. Yeah, I, yes. Or what? like, sometimes I get invited to parties. There was a point where I was going to way too many parties because of this damn meet page. <laughs> like, people just want me to show up and they'd be like, there he is. Like, this is the guy. And they're like, give him a shot. Give him this, give him that. And I'm like, up till six in the morning. And I I live with my grandma so i'm like crawling home and she's like you're all right and i'm like yeah <laughs> so then, like it was a point where i was like i just had to chill out like i stopped dming people back like i can't go to your party don't take it serious but like you can't say no to millionaire parties you know what i mean like, or like a cs party that's pretty fucking crazy you know so that's our cue affirmations getting you invites to parties yeah and, and like i never thought so like i thought to myself like i'm just some nerd people just want the memes and that's it but then people will message you at like 11 p.m like hey me and the boys are going downtown like we want to know what it's like to hang out with us our affirmations and i'm like all right all right i'm yeah. in no, now, right, don't now forget the mic but oh, you did, gotta tell the best story now did that. all this party and lead to your breakup huh yeah. <laughs> i'm asking why we got to bring up the break? This happens to people. <laughs> it, was a, it was pretty climactic. Right? <laughs> well, also, now you're a local celebrity, so, you know, the nature of that relationship may have changed. I mean, right? That, that happens. Yeah, it's her loss, dude. <laughs> no, she, I mean, Lord. she lost the freaking guy behind SRQ Affirmations. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely on her. Anyways, what was the best story that you ever, like, the best story to ever come out of you starting that page? Like, your, your favorite moment? Because you oh. talked about some things, right, which are cool, but let's... Put a real story in place. Do you I gotta, hear what's I gotta, going on dude, in my current life? I gotta hear. I gotta oh, hear. All right. Say so probably the craziest party I've been to, or the craziest SRQ affirmations affiliated night I've had was I had a buddy who wanted me to come over to a, a house party and I wasn't buddies with him yet. He had just been messaging me, telling me all these friends who wanted to meet me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out. And I went to this house party and met like a, probably about 30 people I've never met in my life, but they were so excited to meet me. We ended up accidentally staying up till five in the morning. And I had a, a tarpon fishing trip to be at at oh. seven in the morning. And uh, so I left this party at five in the morning and then met my friends down at the 10th street boat ramp, like right by Van Wazel yep. at seven, just absolutely just like, ah -woo and uh, it was, it was a pretty bad fishing trip. So, so that was, uh, <laughs> like it lasted I three hours. It. I got back and do kids still do uh, cake skins? Huh? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> do yeah. kids still do kicks? <laughs> still thing for the uh, how for long? The how long was the ride out? That must have been a long boat uh -huh. ride to get out to the fishing grounds, right? Oh god, no, tarpon fishing right off the beach. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It was. A, it was. It was the longest thirty minutes of my life. I would say. You know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> that, that's amazing. Um, man, man, I don't even know where we go from there with after that. Like that's phenomenal. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious kind of more about like the, how it's affected your life besides just all that stuff. Like you're obviously really passionate about like the work. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand how important and how the role memes have in people's everyday life. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, just scrolling on Instagram, everybody picks up their phone. Like, yeah, there's a reflex in the morning and you, you see your favorite pages. So mm -hmm. you're like a part of people's life. Yeah. That's every that's day, a big which I think thing is cool. I think too, is um, like at first it just felt like these silly little things I was making but when I'm constantly hearing about the uproars and stuff like that, like of, of how this means to people, it, it becomes very special. And every single time I make one, I feel how special it is. And when I get the reception of how special people felt towards it, I'm like, we're all rocking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it just... It just really it's does rewarding. hit me hard. Like, and there are times too where I want to put messages out. Like, I made a meme about the St. Armand's roundabout. How people want to just blow through that. Like, why is it such a hard task to be a pedestrian in Sarasota when you you're doing the right thing by walking, but everybody's just hauling ass, not accommodating to these roundabouts and making people fear that. So maybe you can move the needle on that. Just yeah, a little, so little bit. I'll, I'll right, kind of your part. like dock people for it and make them feel like, hey. I shouldn't be hauling ass through the air. Like, right. let me slow down. Like, all those roundabout memes truly are just to spread awareness so people slow the hell down. Yeah. Are, are you, you talking? Are you talking about the St. Armand's roundabout, the main one? There? Yes. Yeah. 
So yeah. it's funny you bring that up because there actually is a proposal out to redo the bridge that goes right before it. No kidding. It'll, yeah. And, and what are we so talking they, here? Well, we got to figure out what, what we're going to do. What kind of memes are we talking? I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, the, the a local paper just did a, a piece on, on the three different options. Mm -hmm. They're going to, I mean, the bridge is old. It's built in like the 50s or 60s. They're going to have to do something. Well, so I think I think there's a great what they do. I think yeah. there's a great follow the twin bridges you're talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, yeah. the yeah. twin bridges. There's a great fishing bridge. Oh yeah. Too. yeah. I, I think there's a great follow up question to that because you know you talked about how special that everybody feels and you know that impact you're making, right? I think is what we're talking about is the impact. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans to monetize it? Do you have like have you oh, even I'm thought gonna about make some it? T-shirts too, and okay. I want to do bumper stickers. I want to okay. do silly so novelty swag type stuff. Yeah, but in the sense of like um, like you know when you travel down the floor you're always getting some tacky gear mm -hmm. and I want to keep it that way like I don't want to make it something too monetization you know a lot of people want to come out here and become a wood crafter when they get big but it's like come on let's just stick to t-shirts and fun stickers yeah. that are cheap for everyone to enjoy and buy you know Fair. so I guess that's, I that's the, really cool. the next step you know and, awesome. and that makes sense with the page because I mean basically it's all just one big inside <laughs> joke that anybody who either yeah. and if you're a fan of Sarasota, Sarasota or currently lives in Sarasota shows, right, it's gets it. two niches right well, there and, and there's a there was a there was a point in time where there was a point in time where I saw a lot of food and beer stuff, right? Yeah. So I was out. I, I think it was actually Super Bowl Sunday. I was out uh, at Food and Beer, and the owners of Food and Beer were there, and I was talking with them, and I, I'm like, I'm like, is that SRQ Affirmations page? Are you paying them to uh -huh. do that? Like, because I'm because I was thinking we should do that for Sarah's Speaks. We'll pay them to promote, right? So don't get any ideas now, but uh, <laughs> Wait, we're buddies now. Yeah, we're, we're good now. <laughs> but uh, but he's like, no, we don't we don't pay we don't pay for that. That's just you know he's picked up some of our stuff and and puts it out there. But I've messaged him saying thanks, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that's you haven't none of none of what you've done has been paid up to this point. It's no, just all been. I just wanted uh, to enjoy it and just you know talk about a couple local subjects and you know. Do I people just, give you material like uh, other? Do, no, do people give not you material. At all all really? I've ever gotten is um, I will. Just send memes out to a couple people like nobody special just stereotypical people like if they fit a certain personality of a sarasota person that i think i'll send it to them and just get their honest opinion and however they react if it's the way i want it then i'm it's good to and go you post it yeah and it's like sometimes they won't like it and i'm like perfect you're like you know depending on if i want a certain criteria to enjoy it you know what so I mean? so you had to have grown up born and raised here or what? yeah yep okay. yeah sarasota my uh my mom was a ringling student back in the 80s and uh my dad is a uh ship's captain for like an oil company like he worked for shell oil so it's like a real weird uh growing up like i got to travel a lot through europe um i actually uh traveled through the panama canal at 12 days old and it um, oh, no i have a stamp on my birth certificate for it because i was so young they had to treat it like cargo so there's it's just a cargo stamp of panama canal on it because my dad was so pr pr prideful to have a son and and thought it was an okay idea to bring his 12 day old son down to, to wow panama canal, yeah. <laughs> okay that's and, cool uh, so yeah growing up like uh i i grew up in bradenton and i went to bayshore high and in 11th grade, uh, my dad had taken a, a tour down to um, past Africa. And on his way back, he uh, ended up getting captured by Somalian pirates. And uh, I was in American history class, and I saw a phone going off, and the caller ID said FBI. I'm like, son of a bitch. So I son of a bitch. I hate when this happens. <laughs> I, I answered the phone. Again. I found my weed. <laughs> 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 So, so you got a call in the middle of class? Yeah, and like and it, that was when like did you get a call for the call. Oh, I am, no, I'm I mean, sorry, I'm teacher. I take this as the I, FBI. I looked, I looked down at my 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 backpack, and I'm like, you know, you're trying to be really sneaky, and I'm like, oh shoot, like that call ID looks a little serious. So I raised my hand. I was like, I, I like I have an emergency call. Like like my phone is in my bag, but. And like I just hurry up and answered it, and it was uh, just some gentleman over um, in England saying, "Hey, how's it going? Like, just want to let you know your dad's captured by Somalian pirates. He uh, he's off the Cape of Africa. You can't speak to him because you're American, and if they ha have any clue that there's American ties involved, they'll just kill him." And I was like, "Oh, okay." So then three months went by. Uh, he got out of that, and first thing he did, he comes to Sarasota. And it was right around the time Captain Phillips comes out. It was back when there was that Applebee's right in that movie theater down <laughs> on Main Street. We all know, you yep. know, Hollywood. Um, yeah. And he just looks at me and goes, 
I get too excited. And instead, we sat and moped in the Applebee's for two hours and did <laughs> not see Captain Phillips. <laughs> so did he come back with some crazy stories? Oh, yeah. Away? He was complete. Like, it was just like a classic war story. Like, Was it hard, though? Huh? Like, was it a shitty three months? Oh, did boy, like yeah. Like, he, he really went through it. Like, uh, like, he really did become the master of speech. Like, he... Um, like, I guess you could say if you're dealing with craziness, you have to act crazy, too, to get through it. And a lot of the stuff he had to say about it sounded like it was really just tussling and arm wrestling these people. There was even a point where he had a big story where he said um, that they smelled really bad on a ship and he, they hosed all these Somalian pirates off with the hose, even though they're the ones being captured. But the biggest deal about it was is he became the first person to have a hostage situation where not a single crew member died and the minimum ransom was met um, and at that period of time. So he pulled all of that off, but in the end, like he went down for it because he was told to shut engines off and they found through a black box that he did not until three hours later because he thought he personally could just go straight through that entire zone like a badass. Right. Yeah. So that did not work out. Yeah, that no. did not work mm -hmm. out. That was so. that's crazy. I'm glad he got that he got back though. I mean, that's freaking yeah. huge because that's a long three months. So it must have been hard for you. Like, is my dad gonna come back? They're gonna kill him. Like, what? Uh -huh. Like that had to be tough. Yeah, exactly. Like, there was a time where we were like, oh, my God, is he really going to make it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, wow. We thought he was just going to be a legend after that. And now he visits, every, <clears throat> like, he lives in Sarasota, but he's such an elusive guy. Like, you don't even know it, but you probably brush shoulders with him all the time at a local coffee shop. Just the, the man himself. And he himself in his world is a local legend. Like, he'll go and he'll speak at colleges and stuff um, for it. And yeah, Very cool. Yeah. So Very cool. Hey, we're having a blast here getting to know Nick, the man behind SRQ Affirmations. If you want to get to know him a little bit more, stay tuned for Rapid Fire Questions. Uh, my name is Nick Alabasic. I'm with SRQ Affirmations, and this is Rapid Fire. Forrest Gump. I'm sorry, I'm a simple man. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, it's a burden. What? Well, wait a minute. Don't call the sandwich police on me. But yeah, that's that's a sandwich. I believe that you have to stand for things. And once you start making words encompass everything, society falls to shit. Grass all day long. It's just... It's just right there for you. Mmm. Can you smell it? Um, definitely chinchilla, but that's probably because I own one of them. I'm, I'm very biased. You know, they're just bouncing all over the place, and everybody has one, but they just seem so special for some reason. Um, definitely anything Creed. It's going to be Can You Take Me Higher. Can Cause everybody wants to do something like this, you know. Oh, it would definitely be Beverly Hillbillies, Ballad of Jed Clampett. Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. Something about that just rootin' tootin' feeling just makes me want to run in there. What's over? I was like a mud pit. Oh, definitely the Scooby Doo one. Cause like I really do have a problem with there being nothing to do in this town past 10 p.m. And that one seems to resonate with people very well. And I threw Daiquiri Deck in the background of it because Daiquiri Deck closes at 10. Why? I have no idea, but that's part of the problem. Definitely Felipe. Have you seen the guy? He's a chiseled, chiseled man. <laughs> a dapper fellow. <laughs> Uh, probably a roll of duct tape because I need to do a bunch of things and um, every time I watch any sort of naked and afraid or survival thing, the guy who wins is always a roll of duct tape or the guy who decided to pick bug spray. Oh, probably pain park because I used to be there every day and hang out there every day and now that I'm not there, I look back on it and I'm like, man, I really was just sitting in a parking lot.
So we got an event coming up at the Sarasota Square Mall. It's a candlelight event. Can you elaborate on that and your feelings towards it? Uh, basically, people are crazy, and when they see something as funny as that on Facebook, they're going to show up to it. I don't think it's going to close off at all, but you know what? People are just going to rally around that, and that's just part of what being local is, apparently. You want to give the viewers some uh, backstory on what's going on? Um, basically, the Sarasota Square Mall was a big, giant point in a lot of our childhoods and now it is basically just a vacant space for spirit halloween right for spirit halloween yeah we had a couple people go down there just to check to see if that meme was that was a great meme it it might be it might be one day yep you never know it's it was it's just a costco down there but for some reason we all hold on to this cement block like it's really something and now to the point where somebody has created an event on facebook and it's recepting up to 800 people for a Saturday night just to show up to an old mall in your hometown with a couple lit candles. Like, so, is, it, is, is it like I've been, I, I'm not hosting the, it, but I, I'm I, hearing I all guess, about I it. guess it's, it's rest R. in R. peace. R. Rest Even in peace to Sarasota Square Mall. I believe Costco is supposed to be there until 2030, you know? Yeah. Who knows? I guess we'll see, right? Yeah. But it, I think that place is too far south to breathe life back into. No who way. Knows? It's done. You know? uh, who knows? But as a guy who posts a lot of memes about this particular subject, I think you will definitely have some great opinions on it. So Trey's got a, another question here for you. I have a question, but it comes from Tom and Inner Law. Yeah. What are your feelings on roundabouts? Do you love them or do you hate them? Oh my God. I just don't think we know. It's too much power for one man. We take away the street light and give everybody the option to do what they want. And they are just going to take it with greed and haul <laughs> ass right through it. You know, That's if, we an could, amazing answer. if we could just calm down and take turns on the roundabout, they'd be great. But instead we're just hauling ass through it just so we could flip somebody else off and blame them. You're not supposed to curse. Oh. No, I'm just joking. Oh. You're not supposed <laughs> no, but you're not supposed to take turns either. <laughs> oh, really? Well, how does it wound about work? Like I've been making so many memes about them. I have no clue. Please oh, so. shine some light. Well, this is a great opportunity for us to shed some light on other people that may be watching that don't know this, but you the person in the roundabout Right, is not supposed to yield. It's just supposed to continue doing what they're doing. And is it one person at a time? And and the person that's entering the roundabout is yielding. So they're looking for an opportunity to enter. Once you're in, you have the right of way. Right. So you don't take turns. I mean, you you can kind of look at it that. But if there's several cars in the roundabout that are going around, and you don't have an opening, you wait for the opening. You get in that roundabout and you do your thing, and that's it. That's yeah, the best. I the can one explain. on um, Siesta Drive though. There you the go. opposite. See how all those cars are just entering and they're yeah. yielding to the people that are in the roundabout. Uh, so taking turns, I think, would create a lot more chaos. Every time he puts this up, it gets so distracting. I know. You can't, you can't, everybody's heads are like turned. Really there. Oh shit! You know what else? Have, Every time he puts something this up, like, to admit, I have something oh. to admit. I got a baby fender bender at around about a few weeks ago. No, you did not. It's been like three or four weeks, and I, I bumped the car in front of me. And you oh, didn't bring no, it up no, on no. the podcast <laughs> once yet? Here we are. I wanted some time to pass. Nice old lady. We pulled over. I had a little damage to my truck, but no damage to her car. She's like, oh, I'm just so happy you pulled over. And I'm like, everything looks fine on your car, right? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, everything looks fine. We're good. I'm just so happy you pulled over. I'm like, look at that. How about it? Was the in the, uh, in the truck? I said, "Listen, lady, I'm an expert." Was the incident <laughs> your issue or hers? Well, no one's issue. Well, There's I mean, no of course, technically it's speaking, a no, it's a no yeah, fault I, state. I, I hit her in the back, <laughs> and, and technically speaking, it was my fault. Were you entering, or were you? She was entering in front of me, and she hit the brakes, and I. <laughs> so that would be actually her fault, more than likely, because she was entering in front of you. I think. Well, she's a, she's in front of me, so. Yeah, but it's my fault, it's no her, matter what. It's her job to yield. I don't know. We could let the law decide, but and I'm not I'm, looking I'm, at. I'm pretty. I'm law. pretty sure most times, if you rent somebody, it's your fault. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. The so in the are roundabout, <laughs> per, in the roundabout, in no, particular, they have a the yield. Yeah, so yeah no, like, I, under, I understand what he's saying. They're so both. It's like, what if a red? What if somebody was turning right on a red light and you hit him? Right. Well, they turned in front of you in the red light. Or when I was in high school, I was at a stop sign. I pulled in front of a car. Because in my head, I thought they had a stop sign. I thought I was at a four-way. I fucking pulled right in front of them, and bam, they smashed me. That was my fault. I tried to lie and say it wasn't, but 
It was my fault. You know, the irony was real. You know? is, and I, is, I said, oh, my God, I can't believe I, if this, something comes to this. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm sure the foremost expert in the world on roundabouts has probably still had issues in roundabouts. I mean, it's just it's the nature of traffic. It's chaos. All right. So that leads us to our last question, with which Felipe likes to ask. So go ahead, Felipe. Oh, I mean, I like to ask lots of questions, but I'm asking Fair. this one today. Um, you know. You're obviously really passionate about this community and you know a lot of interesting people who we probably don't know. Um, are there people that you could recommend that would like what we do here and would be great on the podcast and who, frankly, Sarasota needs to know? Give us your top one or two. Every, everybody's know give, it's a tough everybody's question. given us somebody. Have you ever heard of pro skater Tony Hawk? Well, there's a surf pro called Toby Hawk down in <laughs> Venice, Florida, and he makes memes just as good as me. I actually talk to him every single day of my life and, and go through, hey, does this look good? Yep, looks good to me. Post it. Sometimes I'll try to guide him, but he's, uh, he's a tough one to guide. But he's just an older guy. And he makes memes, too, and he kind of does his own for his community. Toby Honk. Toby Honk, and that's okay. even his Instagram name. Who else you got? Anybody? Maybe your dad to tell the Somalian oh, pirate yeah. story? Mr. Captain Miroslave Alabasic, yeah. All right, that's him. there we go. Sarasota resident. Well, Nick, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, thank you for sharing your identity with the Sarasota community, and thank you for uh, doing God's work with SRQ Affirmations. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me, sir. Thanks, man. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> Thank you.